Today, we'll be building Gauss to absolutely destroy Steel Path without using a single forma. Whether you prefer nuking enemies or becoming a weapons powerhouse, I've got a build for you. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride as I run you through everything you need to know about the explosive speedster, Gauss. You'll be able to easily replicate what you just saw by the end of this video, as I'm going to walk you through everything you need to know about Gauss, starting with his abilities. Gauss's passive ability is Kinetic Battery, a gauge shown on the right side of your screen. It's an essential part of his kit, as the higher the gauge, the better some of his abilities work. You can increase the gauge by moving around or using certain abilities. By default, you can only fill it to around 80%, shown by a red line. But if you activate his fourth ability, you can go beyond this limit, allowing Gauss to reach his full potential for his abilities. However, while his fourth ability is active, the battery will start to drain, forcing players to cast abilities more frequently to keep the gauge up. But here's the neat part. His fourth ability unlocks a supercharge counter. As long as the battery is above the red line, the supercharge counter will keep increasing. And once it hits 100%, our battery stays full for the remainder of his fourth ability. There will be no more constant drain, and the battery does not decrease even if you use heat sunder. Now that we've got the technical stuff out of the way, let's run over the ability that makes Gauss such a fun speedster to play. Mock Rush. This is Gauss's first ability and what I consider to be the signature ability of Gauss. It makes playing him feel like this. Anyways, back to his ability. Tapping his first ability will send Gauss in a short forward dash but you can also hold down the ability so that Gauss continues running. This ability also charges his battery by 10% upon casting. Furthermore, dashing through enemies will knock them down and further charge his battery by 1% for each enemy hit. And upon hitting a wall, Gauss will create a shockwave that blasts enemies away. Additionally, the energy cost is reduced by half while his fourth ability is active. Oh, and did I mention that you can also jump while dashing? But what good is speed without defenses? A recipe for disaster. Fortunately, Gauss's second ability provides us with the necessary defenses so that we don't end up like that guy. Introducing Kinetic Plating, your impenetrable energy armor. This ability shields Gauss from cold heat and blast and whatever you can think of. Except for Toxin, don't think of that. So yeah, try to stay away from these guys. But other than that, his kinetic plating has some other sweet effects. For one, it also makes you immune to stagger and knockdown. So I better not see anyone using primed sure-footed on him. Anyways, kinetic plating also converts 5% of the damage absorbed into energy. That being said, having kinetic plating active will drain your battery, and taking hits drains it slightly faster which is kind of a slight problem as kinetic plating scales with both ability strength and the battery. You need both of them to be at 100% for full damage reduction from these elements. Though this is not an issue once your supercharge counter is at 100%. But enough about kinetic plating. If you want to absolutely nuke your enemies, then the next ability is what you came here for. Introducing your Weapon of Mass Destruction. Thermal Sunder is Gauss's third ability, and it comes in two flavors. By default, tapping this ability gives you the cold version, while holding it down will give you heat. However, the majority of builds use the heat variant much more often. 
therefore it would be a lot more convenient if we could tap to get the heat variant instead. And we can easily achieve this by tweaking our settings. Head to your options page and search for invert tap. Once inside, all you need to do is change ghost from default to inverted. You can test this by going into game and holding to cast your cold sunder. Your battery should increase upon doing so, as the cold version will increase your battery while the heat version drains it. But what does this ability do and how can we nuke with it? Casting the ability procs an elemental effect on enemies and leaves behind a damage over time zone. Fair warning, the zone's damage isn't that great. Upon casting the cold sunder, you will proc the cold element on enemies within your range. Additionally, if you cast it on enemies with an existing cold effect, they will be instantly frozen. The heat version is fairly similar, but this time, instead of cold, you will proc the heat element on enemies within your range. Both the duration of the status effect and the initial damage are affected by the battery level for both the heat and cold versions. For the heat version, when cast on enemies already affected by a heat proc, Thermal Sunder deals its normal damage plus the damage of the current heat proc, which in simple terms means that you will double your Sunder damage and add another heat status with each cast. However, we can enhance this even more by incorporating the Archon Vitality mod. With this addition, each cast now applies two heat effects instead of one. This increases our damage output significantly. That's cool and all, but I'm not going to cast Sunder a million times just to kill a group of enemies. That's where the third Sunder element comes in, Blast. When enemies are already afflicted with an elemental effect, casting Sunder with the opposite element not only eliminates the existing effect, but also generates the Blast status. Additionally, it inflicts all the remaining damage from your heat status effects onto the enemies directly. Furthermore, if your battery is above the red line, the Blast Sunder will also permanently strip enemy armor. The amount of armor stripped depends on your battery level at the time of casting. Ideally, we'd be at full battery before using Blast so that we can full strip enemies. When enemies are fully stripped, their health bar changes from yellow to red. And when you put everything together, he deals a truckload of damage. Using Archon Vitality and at full battery, simply cast Heat Sunder two or three times before casting Cold, and enemies will drop like flies. This is most convenient when your supercharge counter is at 100%, ensuring your battery remains consistently full. Nonetheless, there's a straightforward method to swiftly obliterate enemies even without the counter. If you recall, his first ability charges his battery quite a bit. So all we've got to do when the counter isn't maxed is use his first ability before casting Sunder. This ensures that our battery is full before casting Sunder. Additionally, Using Corrosive Projection is helpful so that we can full strip even with a battery that is around 90% full. But nukes aside, his final ability is what truly transforms him into the weapon's powerhouse. Redline is Gauss's final ability. But before I show you how this ability turns Gauss into a weapons monster, let's do a quick recap. Upon activating his fourth ability, the cost of Mach Rush is reduced by half, your battery can now surpass its redline limit, and you acquire a supercharge counter. Upon reaching 100% on this counter, your battery will remain fully charged. Furthermore, something to note is that this supercharge counter scales inversely with ability duration, which means that the more ability duration you have on Gauss, the slower this counter goes up. So, with more ability duration, you take a longer time getting into the supercharged mode, but stay in the mode for longer. With less duration, the counter rises a lot quicker, but your red line expires just as quickly due to the lower duration. What this means is that if you're running a nuke build, the amount of duration you need is up to personal preference, be it 100% or 300%. But that's not the case if you're running a weapon-focused setup, because during red line, Gauss gets additional fire rate, melee attack speed, reload speed, and casting speed, which lets him do stuff like this. However, all the buffs I've just listed scale with duration. So if you're running a build focused on those, then you'll definitely want more duration. Now, before I show you the Gauss builds, a fair warning that this section of the video will be fairly short, as we've already went through most of the details in the earlier parts of the video. 
So if you're thinking of slotting in Prime Surefooted, then I highly recommend you rewatch the earlier parts of the video. Now without further ado, let's get right into it. Let's start with the primary weapon. For all of you wannabe speedsters out there, consider slotting in the Amalgam Serration mod on your rifle. This gives Gauss increased sprint speed, which makes his first ability even faster. Though with that said, something even faster is the rate at which his energy is consumed on a nuke build if you don't have sufficient ability efficiency. So that's why on my Sunder build, I run maximum ability efficiency, because when you're casting both your first and third ability this often, trust me that you'll need it. Furthermore, the range of this build is significant enough to eliminate enemies even behind walls, which means that you won't gain much energy from kinetic plating. The Mold Efficiency Arcane also helps increase our duration, since our shields are almost always full. But if you really want to build with more duration, then consider using the second build instead. This build uses the narrow-minded and overextended mods to achieve this duration. The ability strength does however drop to 40%. This really only affects his kinetic plating. But from my testing, this build works just fine, and most of the Sunder footage you've seen was with me using this build. But then again, the amount of duration you need on a nuke build is down to personal preference, since a lower duration can be quite beneficial as explained in the earlier parts of the video. Now on to the final build. This build focuses on buffing your weapon's attack speed, so that you can do stuff like this. You can replace Rolling Guard with any mod of your liking. I am also using a Helminth ability called Energize Munitions, which gives me more ammo efficiency. The great part about this Helminth ability is that it only needs ability duration, and that's something we have for sure. Now before we move on to Archon Shards, if you've reached this point in the video, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on these fantastic Zero Forma builds, especially if you're planning to tackle the new game mode that restricts your Warframe selection. So if you want to use Archon Shards on Gauss, there are only two that I would recommend. The first are the Amber Archon Shards for casting speed. This is great for a Sunder build and makes your gameplay more fluid. And the second type that I would recommend are the Crimson Shards for ability duration. For, well, obvious reasons. Anyways, I can already sense that some of you are going to ask for my Gauss fashion. So if you're keen on making your Gauss look better, then make sure to watch this video where I showcase six of my top picks. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.